Welcome back with a smiling face. Important note before starting, if you are a fan of audio stories then our Patreon account is the best platform for you, join us on Patreon for the best audiobooks ever. Luna's Resurgence Episode 17 Chapter 100-105 Lucinda POV wrapped around Nick's body, needing to feel close to him. They had all told her it was going to be all right, she'd not believed a single one of them. Now, to learn the truth, he'd been a victim as much as she had been. Made her want to hold on to him. Comfort him. He'd done nothing wrong. She would not let him go. Didn't want to. Kyra was in her mind sitting up, growled at her claim our mate. We will. Lucinda agreed. Do it now. Ours. Ours. Lucinda also agreed and felt Kyra shove her back into her own mind and push forward, taking control of her body, was rubbing her head all over his neck, breathing him in, smelling his scent. Wanted her mate now, Lucinda knew Kyra was going to mark him, didn't even try to stop her. She wanted her wolf to feel happy and they had been through so much. Mark him Kyra. Claim what is ours she told her wolf. There was no need to tell Kyra twice, her fangs were in Nick's neck a second later, buried deep. Her fangs, like her claws, were a little longer than most. She heard him groan in pain, but pulled her body tight to his. Smelled when it, when it changed from pain to pleasure, could smell his arousal, she knew it would while Kyra sealed the mark, sliding their tongue over the puncture marks. It would create pleasure for him. The minute her mark was on him, his fangs were in her without hesitation. He was growling the whole time. She realized it was Rip and not Nick. Both their wolves claiming each other. Lucinda felt the connection of their wolves inside her mind. Heard Rip's deep gravelly voice claim Kyra as Kyra claim him. He wanted to mate her right away. She knew that he would. Kyra, on the other hand, it seemed, wanted to wait until they were home in his pack. Their pack. Cheeky blood wolf of hers teased Rip right away. He seemed to like it. Happy to wait and hunt her down on his own turf, it seemed, Kyra was very happy with his comment of mate you good. She heard Nick say her name softly and knew he was likely asking about being alright from being marked by his wolf. It was supposed to be on her terms and he'd not gained her permission. She was alright with it, more than so. Right this minute she just wanted to be with him, so she hugged him to show she was okay with it, heard him sigh softly, glad she was okay. To hear him apologize to her, he didn't need to now she understood what really happened, needed to know if that she-wolf was dead, because if she wasn't, Lucinda was going to put a blade deep in her. She would only live long enough for Lucinda to lay eyes on her. Nick Telling her that Rip had taken her head clean off, she was surprised by the statement, but knew that he had meant it literally. Kyra would likely have done the same thing. Hearing it had been a public execution shocked her completely, though, she didn't know Pax still did those with the exception of duels. She did not want to watch it, trusted him. He'd said he'd killed her. Well... Rip had and she and Kyra both believed him, did not doubt him at all. When her eyes moved to his mark, she couldn't believe it almost, it should be been a pretty silver filigree, but it was white against his tanned skin, so pretty, still she could swear there was a moon cresting in there right above a lotus flower. So beautiful. Your wolf did that he teased her. She knew, had told Kyra too. Not that he knew that, it was so beautiful but unusual at the same time, white filigree, she wanted to touch it, curious if it felt the same or different. Might not want to do that, he growled at her softly. 
Lucinda smiled at him, she did recall the last time she had touched him there, on his mark spot, she'd ended up completely naked and begging for him, man was amazing in bed. She could have him any time she wanted now, she realized. It's white she told him. He'd not understood what she'd meant, so had clarified your mark, not silver. It's white. She'd seen his eyes widen a little in surprise, then his eyes had moved from hers and slid down her neck to her mark spot and she'd heard him growl, probably wanted to mate her still. So was her mark, it seemed. Lucinda knew that she had to tell him everything now. She couldn't leave her women and children here again. What he had made of all of them sitting outside the hospital, the whole time she had been in there, she didn't know. He openly admitted to knowing who she was, surprised her a little, though wondered how much did he actually know. She could find that out later and fill in anything he didn't know, if he wanted to know. Had questions she would just answer them. Didn't want to keep it from him anymore. Her heart nearly exploded when he told her they could all come with them to his pack, that he was not only open to accepting them, but willing to do so all of them and to let them stay in the pack house till appropriate accommodation could be created, made her love him even more than she thought she already did. And she did love him. He stood up, taking her with him, then slid her body down his slowly and growled playfully at her, she smiled up at him, like it too, had felt all tingly and delicious, felt desire bloom within her. They were walking out of the room when she realized she'd not even thought about telling Alpha Cory what was about to happen. Hadn't been thinking about anything but her need to be close with him. To claim what was hers. Looked around at the destruction of Luna Lindy's office and bit her lip, she and KYRA had completely destroyed it. Our living room suite looks exactly the same. Nick told her Rip and I pretty much had the same reaction you did he told her as they picked their way out of the room. Oh there was not much else she could say, she understood his rage, she and KYRA had felt nothing but rage since it happened. They stepped out of the office to find Alpha Corey and Jeremy chatting away leaning on the railing, they both turned and looked at the two of them. Told you so. Jeremy smiled at Alpha Corey I win the bet. You what? Lucinda heard Nick snap angrily. Lucinda watched as Jeremy bolted down the hall laughing, turned at the stairs and looked at Nick the Luna he pointed at Lucinda said it was okay to bet on it. She found herself under Nick's gaze. He didn't look so happy about it. She smiled up at him, batted her long lashes up at him and pouted you can't get mad at me she pointed at Alpha Cory my father was the one running the bet she tried to lay the blame on someone else. Just like Jeremy had. Alpha Cory burst out laughing as Nick huffed in annoyance. Oh, son, you got yourself a handful. Yes indeed he nodded Lucinda smiled up at him. He had no idea. She was more like Jeremy than he thought. I'm tired, she said, and she actually really was. Me too, Nick stated and looked right at her. She realized he wasn't just saying it to get her in bed, now that she was looking at him, he did actually look as tired as she felt. He picked her up bridal style let's go get some sleep, I barely slept at all while you were here. I'm sorry. Hmm. We'll discuss you and KYRA fighting in Alpha another time. I'm sorry she said again. He carried her all the way out of the pack house to her old home and up to her bedroom, put her down on the bed and climbed in right next to her, pulled her body close to his, you'd better be in this bed when I wake up or so help you, I will handcuff you to me as a punishment. Lucinda giggled so he had been outside her room listening to every conversation she'd had since she'd woken up I might like she teased him gently and yawned. Curled into him and breathed in his scent I love you Nick she murmured and felt his arm tighten around her. I love you to Lucinda he kissed the top of her head. She woke before he did, and got to watch him sleep, wanted to touch him, but knew better, 
had seen mates not sleep for days when their mates were injured and or dying in a hospital, she might not have known what was going on, but he had and he'd likely been awake most of the time she'd been unconscious. The itch got the better of her, and she reached out and touched his face gently, slid her fingers along his cheek, a soft growl escaped him and his eyes opened and locked right onto hers. She bit her lip and smiled up at him, sorry I didn't mean to wake you. I wasn't asleep. Just resting with you in my arms is all he smiled at her. Lucinda whacked him do you ever sleep? I did sleep he nodded very well rested now that you're next to me. Then his mouth was on hers, she sighed into him and kissed him back, slid her arms around his neck and leaned right into him, pressing herself against him. He growled and grabbed her hip to pull her closer to him, only to suddenly pull away and look down at her. Sighed and shook his head. We can't. Why? she asked. My dear, look at you. I know you can't feel your injuries, but they are still there. Lucinda sighed, he was right. She couldn't really feel her wounds, goddess not bed rest again Nick. I'll go insane. He chuckled and tilted her chin up, I think KYRA is all over it already, your face is already back to normal. Such a good wolf she is, Lucinda smiled. Yes, she is he nodded, let's go find food to feed her. The sooner you're all healed up, the sooner I can give you exactly what you want. Oh and what is it I want exactly? She teased him and stretched out on the bed next to him. Nick laughed and got up out of the bed, hmm. If I start talking about it, he pulled her up out of the bed. Watched his eyes glaze over and waited. Dinner in the pack house, he stated, and she blinked. Hadn't even realized it was so late, they had slept the whole day away, it seemed. Dinner in her belly, she felt much better. She was sitting at a table next to Nick, his hand was in hers, the man had yet to let her go. Like he thought she was going to vanish if he wasn't holding on to her. Made eating a bit difficult. Never get rid of us now. Kyra chortled inside her mind, then yawned and lay down to sleep. Gabby and James had brought the twins to have dinner with them. In fact, Alpha Cory, Luna Lindy, and his whole Alpha unit plus their mates were all at the table. As were Jeremy and Kevin. She'd apologized for his hand already. He'd shrugged and said kinda comes with the territory then informed her B was on it. Would be good as new by the time he got home to Phoebe. She'd also apologized to Lindy for destroying her office and been informed, with a happy smile. That Nick would be paying for the entire room to be remodeled and she intended on buying the best of everything. Nick hadn't said anything at all, just smiled at her, probably knew it was coming. She'd also had to apologize for punching James, and splitting his lip, he'd just shrugged it off and said nothing. He was all healed up. Just quietly sitting with Gabby and the twins between them. The twins had hugged her tightly when they'd been brought down to dinner and tried to climb into her lap. She'd reminded them that she was still injured even though her clothes covered her injuries. They were still there, and encouraged them to go and sit with Gabby and James. Gabby and James had their eyes on the twins practically the whole time. She was watching the four of them, Gabby and James kept touching the twins' hair. She watched as they looked up at Gabby and James and smiled right up at them, so much love there. Lucinda knew that both of them were waiting on her to lay claim to them and take them back. The twins were so happy, she could see it every time they looked up at their mum and dad. Lucinda felt Nick's hand squeeze hers and turned to look at him. We'll have two little monsters, just like them one day, you know she smiled at him and he smiled right back at her. That thousand-watt smile that was going to get him out of trouble when he did something to annoy her later in life. She realized. Hey. We're not monsters the twins chorused together. Yes you are. Lucinda turned back to them, 
teasing them bit your daddy, I hear, only monsters bite. Food was suddenly thrown at her. She dodged it as did Nick, she laughed while he shook his head. Then she got up and growled at the pair of them playfully. They both squealed and ran from the table. Lucinda chased them about the room, laughing and growling at them like she had always done, snagged them both after a few minutes and returned them back to Gabby and James. Your children, I believe, she said, handing them over. She could never take the girls away from Gabby and James. They had loved them and raised them for the past eight years, she was simply their big sister, it would stay that way. She could discuss it in detail with the two of them later when the twins were in bed asleep. She saw Gabby look up at her from her seat, Lucinda hugged her from behind. I know my sisters will be well looked after. They have an amazing mum. Thank you she heard Gabby say, and could hear the tears in her voice. None of that now. She walked back down and sat next to Nick again. It was the right decision for them. She would still get to see them. Every two weeks. Nick's hand was in hers the minute she sat down, she smiled at him. I'm good, she said, knowing what he was thinking, and she was. Watched as Kevin flicked Jeremy right on his neck, and Jeremy glared angrily at the man, tilt her head slightly. She'd never seen Jeremy angry, she realized. Jeremy was marked while you were away. Nick told her via the mind link no one but Kevin, it seems knows by who. What how is that possible, she was completely shocked. He was unconscious when it happened apparently she could hear the amusement in Nick's voice. Kevin won't tell him who it was. That's cruel. Lucinda shook her head. Pay back for his life of practical jokes. Lucinda nearly laughed out loud, she could see where Nick was coming from. And she already knew Kevin was going to play it out to the very end. Not likely to tell him at all, just torture him with it. She asked Jeremy about it, seeing that Kevin was already annoying the man about it. Long story short. Kevin told her. This IT tried a pack-wide mind link and lost consciousness, nearly melting his own brain. But his mate found him and claimed him while he was unconscious, and then ran away laughing. Thought it was very funny. The whole table was laughing now. You know who she is? Jeremy snapped at him. She leaned back in her chair and watched the two of them bicker about it. Nick, it seemed was of no help to Jeremy. Thought Jeremy was getting a taste of his own medicine and refused to order Kevin to tell him. Jeremy turned to her and she shook her head, looking at Kevin's hand. She could do it, but owed Kevin likely more than one. They'd retired to the pack house common area next to the foyer, Nick called Brady and told him everything had been sorted out, though from what she heard Jeremy had already done that. Nick was likely just calling as the Alpha to reassure them it was all good. He also asked Brady to make sure all the available rooms on the pack house's first floor were ready to receive visitors, explaining to Brady about the women and children that they would be bringing home with them. Then they talked pack business for quite a while. Lucinda left him there to go and talk to Gabby and James. He'd gotten up to go with her and she'd shaken her head. I need to do this on my own, I'm all good, I promise he'd frowned, not liking it. She wondered if he didn't like her going off by herself or if he thought she needed his support for the upcoming talk. But he'd allowed it reluctantly. It wasn't a long conversation. She didn't want to drag it out. Had sat down and stared at the pair of them, then just stated the truth. I have always been their big sister. I didn't know what I was to them. I don't want things to change. We all love them. You should bleed them into your line. It will help me feel less pain when I think about them. And they will feel more connected to you. You deserve that and I want that for you. Are you certain Lucinda? 
James had asked her direct as ever. Yes, she nodded, I still get to see them every two weeks. I'm gonna do that. Would miss them too much not to. They are my only connection left to Matthew. I only have one request. Go ahead. Gabby nodded. I want to be here for their first shift, and the full moon after they turn 18. Agreed. We would have wanted that anyway. Gabby smiled at her. For all their birthdays, I know that day is hard for you. But it seems you handle it better with them around. Mm I do she'd nodded. It's getting late. I'll leave the rest up to you. When you do it or how is up to you she'd hugged them both and headed back downstairs. Nick was exactly where she'd left him, his eyes were on the moment she was in sight. She sank down next to him and hugged him. They'd headed back to her house, always would be hers. Lindy had informed them she could use it every time she and Nick came to visit if she wanted to or they could have a room in the pack house. It would be up to them. Nick was stretched out on her bed, he was too tall for it, but there was nothing she could do about that. She was short compared to him. She was listening to him talk to his sister and his mother, despite all the sleep she had gotten. She was still tired, it seemed. Effects from KYRA healing her, it seemed. She was lying with her head on his chest, he'd patted his bare chest and she'd smiled. The man was not happy with her just lying next him, it seemed. He had one hand in her hair, absently stroking away. It was making her more sleepy by the minute. 101. Nick POV Nick watched as Heather removed Lucinda's stitches and staples the next day. She had been a little shocked that she was just about all healed up already. Nick had told her it was normal for Lucinda, to be healed completely in just a few days from serious injury due to her wolf type. Heather had asked many questions of he and Lucinda about her wolf once hearing about her. Lucinda seemed happy enough to tell her, but he wasn't all that happy with people knowing all the ins and outs of it, could make her a target if one of his enemies found out. He would discuss it with her on the way home in the privacy of his car. Both Jeremy and Kevin already knew, so it didn't matter if they heard. No more battles for you, miss. Go and be a Luna as you were meant to be. Heather had told her. Nick had heard Lucinda's reply, yes Heather. He knew it was unlikely to be her last fight, he was going to do everything to keep her out of any battles in the future, nearly losing her once had been enough. She wasn't going to like being stuck in an office. But he wondered if he filled up her schedule with training instead. Would that work? He was kind of hoping now that she had resolved the Darwin issue, she would be happy in her office doing only Luna duties. He hoped so. But was doubting it. Her women were all safe, as were the twins. Nick had been a little surprised to hear her tell Gabby and James they were the twins' parents. She had relinquished them completely, told him she had always believed they were her sisters and thought it was best for it to stay that way that she did want to still keep the second weekly visits and Nick was okay with that. She was safe here. So coming to visit didn't bother him. He had been very happy to hear her talk about them having two little monsters just like the twins one day. Sounded like she was already thinking about it. He would be more than happy to work on it. Rip had told him he had been right about them wanting pups. Nick was glad. He'd still be happy with one if that was all she wanted, but he wouldn't mind having a few little ones just like her running around. Alpha Cory had called a meeting for all her women and children and they had been gathered in the pack house's common room for a meeting. Where they got to officially meet him and get to make a decision on if they wanted to stay here or go with Lucinda and him to his pack. It did not surprise him that they all chose to go with her. He had told them he was more than happy to welcome them to his pack. That rooms were being prepared for them all within his pack house and they could stay there until suitable accommodation could be found or built for them. 
They seemed happy with this. It took two days to organize everything and get the women and children packed and ready for the move to their new home. Alpha Cory had given Nick the use of their school bus to transport them all to his pack. There were several moving trucks filled with their belongings as well. They were going to make for one long convoy. It was finally time to leave Half Moon Pack for their pack, and he was happy to be taking her home. Really taking her home, she was now officially his Luna and his pack was now her pack. Claiming him meant she really did feel like it was her home. Or at least that's what he thought, hoped. She was not worried about leaving either. Willing to go this time. He was leaning on his car, watching her standing on the pack house stairs saying her goodbyes. Gabby and James had bled the twins to them already and it wasn't killing her to say goodbye to them it seemed. Nor were the two little girls pitching a fit about it and she had promised them that they could come in two weeks and check out her new home. They did seem excited by that. Gabby promised to bring them. She hugged them tightly and told them to behave themselves. They both poked their tongues out at her and she had mimicked them right back then, hugged them one more time. Hugged Gabby and James. Lindy and even Alpha Cory. Lindy told her she would see her for her Luna ceremony. Nick had had a quiet word with Lindy about that while Lucinda had been off helping her women and children to pack for the move. She had told him she would come early and help him out, but for the most part he should just ask her what she wanted. He'd sighed and told Lindy he wanted to surprise her and didn't want her involved much. Show her he did know her. She had smiled right up at him and nodded her head. Told him she was glad, that she was proud of him could see that he had changed his barbarian ways and become a real alpha. Nick knew she was making a dig at him, but he had let it go. She was his mother now. He had to give the woman some leeway and asked her how old she actually was and found she was only three years older than him. Shook his head. His mother three years older than him. It was really weird. But he could see how much Lucinda liked the woman. In the past two days, while she had been running about all over the place, he'd seen her smile a lot. She would catch him looking at her and smile right at him. It made him and his wolf very happy. It was not something he was used to yet, but he could get used to it though. He knew they would fight and argue at times, but he also knew she was his forever and he could and would use that bond of theirs to make her forgive him. They had spent two nights in her home now. He'd asked her about her lack of photos, she'd just shrugged it off and said she saved everything to the cloud. That way they couldn't ever be lost to her. She didn't have her phone on her but promised to show him when she got home. Said she had some really cute ones of the twins growing up. He'd told her she should have them printed and put on the mantle in their suite once it was cleaned and rebuilt which he would have Quincy begin working on when they got home. She'd turned and looked right at him, asked if she would get a say in it. He'd laughed knowing his tastes were very different from hers but had nodded and told her they could argue about it all she wanted. She'd whacked him and then pouted and told him she had to live there too. Nick had smiled and told her he knew, he just thought them arguing about it could be fun he could already see her trying to beat him and it turning into something else. Couldn't wait to get her home to their bedroom. They had talked about pups. He'd told her she could have as many as she wanted, told her Rip wanted a litter and her shocked expression had said it all she thought his wolf was crazy. Stated let him have the pups then. Nick had laughed but Rip was still adamant they were going to have a litter. KYRA didn't seem opposed to the idea apparently. Loved the pups, Nick found out that KYRA enjoyed watching the pups in the crush. Her house not being soundproofed like their suite was. Bothered him, he was not one for everyone hearing them, and he knew he could make the woman cry out and scream. Wanted to make her scream his name. He'd teased her quite a bit in the past two days but had not allowed himself to take it past that. 
found this to be of great amusement to him, as she was quite annoyed with him, wanting to wait till they got back to their pack. It wasn't like he didn't touch her or kiss her, he just wouldn't give her everything she wanted. Was enjoying the restraint he was able to show, told her good things come to those who waited and she'd glared right at him. He had really enjoyed her trying to seduce him, learned quite a bit about her wants and needs in the bedroom. He liked holding her down and tormenting her, till she was begging for him. And then just kissing her and telling her later, my dear. She'd near pitched a fit this morning over him still not giving her what she wanted. He'd smiled down at her and said where's the stubborn woman who refused to let me touch her two weeks ago. She'd smiled up at him and giggled the word gone and he'd only smiled at her, told her he kind of liked it when she ignored him, made it more fun. And with that she had shoved him away roughly and said, well let's see if you get what you want when you want it then, and climbed right out of the bed. Nick had rolled onto his side and watched her walk completely naked across the bedroom heading for the shower, liked that KYRA didn't heal the marks he left on their body. She had several love bites across her body. He had kissed every inch of her and to his delight she had him as well. Happy, he had been when her mouth had made its way down his body. He'd had his eyes right on her and hers had met his, he growled at her as she'd stared up at him, making him wait to see if she would actually take him into her mouth or not. When she had, he'd not taken his eyes off of her, it was darn hot to watch. Felt freaking amazing and he'd returned in kind. Pulling her right up his body the moment she swallowed his CM, had positioned her right over his face and growled my turn then pulled her right down onto his mouth and stayed there until she was a gasping moaning messing above him, watched her clutch at the bed head and ride his face thoroughly enjoying herself. Had pulled her body down onto the bed and growled at her to go to sleep. She'd wanted more from him and he'd nearly given in to her. But he knew what he would be like and the sounds he was going to elicit from her, he didn't want anyone to hear. Told her to sleep now because when he got her home she would be his and KYRA would be rips, rest might be a luxury. She'd chuckled and snuggled into him. It was nice to sleep next to Lucinda knowing she was going to be there in the mornings and happy to be curled in his arms. Happy to wake up next to him. He'd gotten a morning kiss and a smile every morning. He liked it. They were finally in his car and headed for their pack. She was sitting right next to him, his arm draped around her, he liked this. Would never tire of it. Just seemed to always feel happy when she was leaned up against him. Part of their mate bond he knew, but at least now he could see and understand why wolves were happy once mated. Jeremy was driving and Kevin was in the front seat. They were at it again, bickering about Kevin not giving up any information on Jeremy's mate. He had mink-linked Kevin to spill it to him and when Kevin had told Nick he thought it was Mylan's daughter due to her looks, Nick had asked him to describe the woman. The blue hair had said it all. Oh so much fun to be had. Told Kevin he could keep it to himself. Thought it was a very amusing piece of information. He'd relayed the information to Lucinda and told her not to tell him, it was game on in the pack. A little payback for Jeremy betting on them. She had chuckled but was happy for Jeremy and was keen to meet the water nymph and make friends with her, it seemed. He'd watched her turn and look at the bus traveling behind them, checking on her women and children, she'd done it half a dozen times, he'd let her. She couldn't help it, it was in her nature as their Luna to worry about them. Kevin had told him about her interaction with them outside the PAX hospital before she had come to Lindy's office. It had surprised him that she had eluded the fact that she was not their Luna anymore. Kevin had told him what he'd felt from her as she had walked away from them was like a weight had been lifted off of her. She had done her duty to them and was able to feel better about herself. Or at least that had been what he thought. Nick had yet to bring it up and likely wasn't going to. She'd called herself the last Luna of her pack. 
which she was. But now she was the Luna of his pack and all her people were coming with them. So, now a Luna to them all over again, he had the distinct feeling that her women and children were very happy about it. Had heard them all call her Luna when addressing her now, since accepting the invitation to come to his pack, they had instantly started calling her Luna. Like it was all they had ever wanted to do. 102. Jeremy POV Kevin was a right pain in the A.S. Not only had he yet to tell him what his mate looked like, he continually just smiled and kept insisting she looked like her father. Implying she was masculine to look at. He'd seen her beautiful eyes, there was no way. But the way he said it bothered Jeremy, it sounded truthful. Kevin thought it was very funny. Nick was of no help to him. Jeremy had not once asked him to intervene while he was worried about Lucinda. Knew better, his friend had nearly lost his own mate. But now, even though everything was going well and they were marked and had claimed each other, he was all loved up and with all that had been going on. Had only had time for Lucinda and her pack members. He had asked Nick this morning to intervene and Nick had told him no and still refused to allow Jeremy to order Kevin to tell him. Lucinda wouldn't do it. She and KYRA had busted the man's hand and it had had to be reset by the Half Moon Pax surgeons so that his wolf, B, could actually aid in healing it properly. She had guilt over it, it seemed. Nick, it seemed, was now also amused by Jeremy's situation. His alpha, his best friend, had looked at him and told him with a smirk you got yourself a naughty mate, serves you right. For all those pranks you constantly pull on me. It was clear to Jeremy that Nick now knew who it was. Kevin had shared the information with him, so it seemed, but they both stubbornly refused to tell him. The pack was large 2,000 members and hundreds of them unmated, and no one knew she was his mate. What if someone tried to touch her? He didn't like it. Thought they were being a bit mean towards him. He'd not gotten in the way of either of their mate bonds. Had told them both as much. Nick had told him we are not in the way, Jeremy. Your mate shushed Kevin, she didn't want him to tell you. So I'm guessing she wants you to have to hunt her down. Play a game with you I imagine. Enjoy it. You like games, go play her game when you get home. He had parked right out the front of the pack house in Nick's personal space, and stalked into the pack house. It had been a very long drive with none of them willing to tell him anything about his mate, they all thought it was amusing. Brady was standing on the top step to greet them all, looked right at him and grinned from ear to ear, she is very naughty he'd told Jeremy which meant that he too knew who she was. It now seemed everyone knew who she was and none of them would tell him, he'd glared right at Brady who'd clapped him on the back and stated I like her then walked off down to Nick and Lucinda. Jeremy banged into his suite and shut the door. They were all going to get a beating at the rate they were going. He shook his head and sighed, his nose twitched and he took a deep breath in, took two more steps into the room and breathed in again. There it was the scent, her scent. Here inside his suite, Cal was right at the front as they went from room to room. He could smell her everywhere. His bed was messy, not how it should have been, and he could smell her scent on the sheets. The woman had slept in his bed, been all over his suite, touched everything it seemed, even smelled her in his walk-in. Brady had to have let her in here. All the suites were coated and only Nick and the Alpha Unit plus the Omega that cleaned this floor had access to these rooms. Not even Kevin's mate Phoebe, had access to his room. So it had to be Brady who'd let her in here, that man did know who she was. Stalked out of his room and yelled Brady's name as he made his way down the stairs. Brady was standing with Kevin by the front door now laughing so hard he was holding his abdomen. Told you Kevin. Jeremy glared at him, then at Kevin, and returned his eyes to Brady. 
you let someone in my suite. Oh, come on Jers, she's your mate. How could I not? It's her suite to now. Who is she? Brady shook his head. Told me not to tell you he laughed. She's adorable. Full of energy and very excitable. Jeremy's anger and annoyance evaporated at the word adorable. He knew it. Not what Kevin had implied at all. When did she stay in my suite? Night before last. Left wearing one of your shirts too. Seems she is quite comfortable up there he chuckled. How do you know she was my mate, he asked. Kevin had given him no details at all. Perhaps Brady would. I found her upstairs, practically rubbing herself all over your sweet door. Shocked me quite a bit he nodded then she looked at me, put her fingers to her lips and shushed me, ran away laughing he shrugged I hazarded a guess. I, Kevin added, told Brady here, her most distinguishing feature. Just like her father. Brady nodded, not wrong on that and then he went back to laughing. You're all going to get a beating. Jeremy snarled at them. This ST had to be sorted out. He stalked outside to where Nick was, he was talking to Samantha and Mary. They were happy to have him home. It seemed the man had finally relinquished Lucinda to Samantha, the woman was hugging her tightly as Mary stood next to Nick. He couldn't very well interrupt the introduction of the Luna to the Alpha's sister now. Nick would likely put a boot in him. Sighed, he was going to have to wait till they were all done before demanding his Alpha actually be an Alpha and help him find his mate. He turned his eyes down the road and just surveyed the pack. Everything seemed calm and in order. Found a girl leaning on a tree looking right at him, Cal was up inside his mind instantly, used his wolf's sight to get a better look at her. Tall with blue hair, she winked right at him and then turned and ran away. He and Cal could hear her laughing mate. Cal growled. Most likely, Jeremy thought and shot off the mark to go after her, he would hunt that girl down. He reached the spot she had been standing, leaning up against the tree just watching him. There it was her scent so strong. Morning dew, jasmine and freshly fallen rain. That blue-haired woman was his mate. Hunting her now would be easy. Seeing as they were only minutes behind her. He and Cal track her through the woods. She was fast, he noted, liked that she was, Cal liked it even more, kicked in his natural instincts to chase and hunt. She did not stick to any of the paths that wound through the pack, just seemed to be running away from him without thought of where she was going. She was, however, still laughing, Cal's hearing was listening to her, still found it highly amusing. It seemed to be running away from her goddess-gifted mate, she would only get so far, he was gaining on her now. Jeremy came to a standstill as he saw her now trapped and unable to go anywhere. She had run without rhyme or reason and was now stuck at the top of the waterfall on the eastern lake, nowhere to go now, he thought. Then she was stripping off her clothes, right out there in the open and he was getting to see her naked. Liked that he did. Saw her turn and look right at him, completely naked before him, her whole body there for him to look at he was getting his first real good look at her. Long blue hair, all the way to her hips, blue eyes, so bright and full of life, blue lips, now that intrigued him, was it lipstick or natural? Oh, he didn't care, she had a couple of facial piercings, liked that too. Oh, she's ours. Cal growled inside Jeremy's mind. Like the fact that their mate was already naked and ready for the mating, it seemed. Agreed. Jeremy pulled his shirt clean off, showing her he was more than happy about the mating that was about to happen, took a step towards her, watched her as she blew him a kiss and then turned and dove clean off the waterfall. It was a good fifty feet drop to the water below. He chuckled he'd jumped off it before 
kind of a rite of passage around here. Jeremy wasted no time, headed for the top of the waterfall, dropped his shirt and ripped his clothes off, then and dove in after her, surfaced and couldn't see her, waited and watched for her to resurface, frowned when she didn't, then felt something touch his foot, knew it was her, the electric feeling he'd felt on his face the day he'd found her was running up his foot and along the back of his leg. Then she was gone. His mate, it seemed, could hold her breath for a very long time. That could be fun, he thought, a smirk touching his face. Then a few feet away she finally surfaced. Her blue eyes appeared above the water, they were actually glowing, he realized, it was just her eyes above the water, everything else still submerged. Did the girl not need to breathe? He thought. Then he felt something slide up his leg and it dawned on him. Looks just like her father. Phelan. Cal piped up in his mind. Nick had told him she had shifted and was like her father, a water nymph, glanced down and saw it. Her tail, also blue though much lighter, almost a baby blue in color, very pretty, it was sliding away from him. His eyes moved to hers, it only excited him more to have such a unique mate. Come here woman, he growled at her and reached out to grab her. Phelan was gone, just like that. So fast with that tail of hers. Heck, how was he supposed to, made a water nymph, in nymph form? Ah, he would figure it out. Struck out after her, saw her practically glowing beneath the water as she swam around. Goddess, how was he supposed to catch her like this? She was playing with him, toying with him more like it, swimming away from him, then coming back to touch him with her tail and then dashing away when he tried to get hold of her. He got to watch her surface many times, just her eyes above the water, all aglow, and he could see she was fully amused with her antics. Enjoying toying with him. Ah baby, come here he tried to coax her, and reached out slowly to get her, near had her too, mere inches away from his hand and he thought finally she was going to let him have her, but then she was gone again, dashed away from him under the water. He growled a little annoyed, but still enjoying the hunt that was going on. He was standing in waist-deep water, he'd tracked her all the way across the lake it seemed. Was tracking her movement through the water, easy enough considering the glowing she was doing as she moved around tormenting him, she was too fast to catch even with his wolf's speed. Beta. Why are you hunting my daughter? Mylan's no non-seen voice came from behind him. Jeremy turned towards the water's edge and looked at his soon-to-be father and had no idea what to say to a man who could use magic to drown you at will. Mylan was standing on the shoreline with his arms folded across his chest staring right at him. No one messed with the man, and here Jeremy was hunting the man's daughter. He had to explain himself, was unable to come up with a reason he thought Mylan would be okay with. Knowing just how very protective of Phelan the man was, he was naked and that would not escape Mylan's attention. Hum probably should have thought this one through a bit more. Jeremy was well aware of what the man could do. He could see that Mylan was waiting for an explanation, staring at him real hard. Didn't seem happy about what he was seeing. She bit me he finally found words. Pointed to his neck, to show Mylan the mark, Phelan had placed on him. I'm aware of that naughty child, came running home to tell me. All excited he shook his head. Twirled around like a ballerina. Giggling. So you know, I am her mate then. That was a relief. I am aware, that does not mean I approve of you trying to mate her out here, for all to see. Jeremy nodded my apologies, Mylan. I didn't actually know who she was till she shifted felt a sudden and sharp pain in his backside, yelped and turned around to see his mate swimming away, she had just bit him, right in front of her father, uncaring it seemed that he was there. 
still wanted to play her game regardless. For the love of the goddess, he heard Mylan huff. Turned back to look at the man, raising his hands. He'd not yet touched the woman, hadn't encouraged that behavior. Good luck Beta. Mylan shook his head. Jeremy frowned a little and looked at him questioningly. Female water nymphs, are very naughty. I have trouble myself, containing her at times. I expect my princess, to be taken care of, and no mating in public for all to see. Of course, Mylan. If I can catch her, I will take her back to the pack house. Jeremy reassured him, though he was more than a little disappointed, he'd been looking forward to mating her out here. You had better. Mylan nodded and then turned and walked away. Jeremy turned back to the lake to see her eyes just above the water, still fully amused, it seemed. He smiled right at her told your father what you did, did you? Phelan nodded at him, flicked her tail at him and splashed water all over him, then was gone. He knew he was never going to catch her out here in the water. This was her game and he could not win it, not unless she wanted him to. He struck out for the other side of the lake, didn't stop to play with her. If she wanted to play hard to get, so would he. He could see her swimming beneath him, she touched him several times and swam away. He smiled but ignored it. She beat him to the other side easily. And was waiting on him just her eyes above the water as always. Where are you going, he heard her voice, sounded very musical to his ear, filled with amusement still. She was close, he thought, not close enough to grab though. To my bed, he commented casually. Ah you don't want to play with me. Oh I do, he nodded but I can't win in your domain. She laughed softly, it was a very melodic sound and sent a shiver of pleasure through him poor baby she teased him. M.M., he stopped in hip deep water and turned to look at her. She instantly disappeared under the water. No glow this time, he noted, could apparently turn that on and off. It seemed he was going to have to wait for her to come to him. He really did want her. Loved that her hair was bright blue at the ends and a little darker around her face, it was so unusual and kind of mysterious, wondered if she dyed her that color when in human form. Mylan had brown hair when not in nymph form, his hair only blue when shifted. Jeremy couldn't see her, gone it seemed, shook his head and turned around to leave. Phelan was right there in front of him, in human form, he'd not even heard her shift. Let alone surface, stealthy she was it seemed. She was smiling up at him. Phelan was not that much shorter than he was, an easy six feet tall. Her beautiful blue eyes were locked onto his. He reached out a hand and touched her face. Finally, she didn't run away, actually leaned right into his hand. Had enough playing with him, it seemed. He liked that she was happy to stand naked in front of him. Not shy about her body at all. You're beautiful he told her, his eyes moved over her hair, really liked it, slid his eyes to her mouth, very full lips, dark blue in color, slid his thumb across her lower lip soft and not lipstick naturally dark blue, saw the two pointed piercings under her lips, interesting he smiled, touched them gently. She was seemingly enjoying his touch, opened her mouth slightly and poked her tongue out at him, made him smile pierced as well, she was full of surprises. It seemed mine he growled at her. Slipped a hand behind her neck and pulled her forward. A bite for a bite, he and Cal said together. Heard her giggle as his mouth touched her neck, breathed in her scent deeply, goddess she did smell good. Smiled right against her mark spot, kissed it softly, felt her whole body practically melt into his then just stepped back, let go and walked around her and away. A smirk on his face. What? she gasped, 
completely shocked, not understanding what had just happened. You wanted to play, didn't you? He turned and looked at her. She was staring right at him, looked very confused to him. Jeremy dropped a neat bow and then turned and headed for the waterfall, smiling to himself. He could also play games. Heard her following him in the water, he kept his pace casual and she seemed to just follow. He stopped right beside the waterfall and turned to look at her. She was pouting now, had expected him to mark her and seemed a wee bit confused that he hadn't, but she was following him and that was what he had wanted. They were still in her domain, but it seemed her not getting her own way was bothering her. Probably always got her own way, he thought. Mylan had called her a princess. She would learn he was as good at games as she was. Jeremy stood there and stared at her. She was starting to look a little nervous, he noted, probably worried he wasn't going to mark her, good. A little payback of his liking. Then he snapped his arms out and around her before she could run away and pulled her to the space behind the waterfall. Public but private, she was already giggling. He loved it. Leaned her up against the rock wall and kissed her softly, tasted those lush lips of hers, felt her whole body press up against his and kissed him right back, will you mate me, she moaned as his mouth moved from hers down her neck, sounded like she wanted to be mated to him. Here. Jeremy asked. Oh he liked her a lot. Where else would we for my first time, she sighed. Her hands were moving over his body already, touching him and sending electricity flying everywhere. He would mate her wherever she wanted, liked that he was going to be her first. Untouched by all, he would be the only one to ever touch her. That thought had him hard in an instant. Grabbed her ass and picked her clean up, felt her legs wrap around him. His whole body was hot and electrified by her, bit her right there, marking her claiming her for himself, he would wait no more to have what was his. Was more than shocked when she shifted her whole body, sliding along his and then pushed herself down on his hard CK, taking him inside of her. She was so tight. Phelan he groaned, knew he needed to take it slow, this was her first time, but she seemed to have other ideas as she started moving against him then was mating him with a need so strong his only thought now ah screw it and gave the girl, his mate exactly what she wanted, all of him hard and fast, heard her moans and cries of pleasure, her whole body thrusting with his, her nails digging into his back, she was perfect for him. Felt her seeming, her whole body was taut and her back arched, pressing her hips hard against him, she was gasping his name. He growled hers him and Cal together as he felt her CM, her body fluttering and pulsing around his hard CK. He pushed her heart up against the rock and CM for her, spilled his seed deep inside of her. Cal was suddenly pushing forward, staring at her salty he growled, calling for his own mate, Jeremy knew. His wolf was not going to wait a single second to claim what was his. She surged forward her eyes all glowing and staring right at him. Cal was on her, kissing her hard, she was all over him, didn't even object when Cal yanked her around, kicked her legs apart and took what was his, mating her furiously till Salty, his mate, was screaming out his name. Jeremy could only shake his head and smile, as Cal relinquished control back to him and sauntered off into the back of his mind all satisfied and lay down. He was standing there holding onto Phelan's body, turned her around to make sure she was all right, she had a soft smile on her face and seemed to be ready to pass out, too much baby, he asked softly, but with a smile, as he scooped her up bridal style. So sleepy she snuggled right into him, exhausted from their mating. Jeremy kissed her forehead and carried her back to the top of the waterfall, placed her down on the ground pulled his pants on and put his shirt over her, made sure it covered all of her and then picked her up once more and headed back to the packhouse for his suite. Smiled down at her. 
she was sound asleep by the time he walked into the pack house, saw Nick up on the first floor, he smiled down at Jeremy, found her, I see. And marked and mated her. Jeremy smiled isn't she beautiful, he was really ecstatic that she was his mate, there was no one like her in this pack. She was unique and beautiful, everything he ever wanted in a mate. Jeremy lay her down in their bed and just lay down next to her and watched her sleep. Touched her face gently, traced a finger along her ear, soft and delicate, slightly pointed at the top. When she woke up, he was going to touch her absolutely everywhere, taste every inch of her, right down to her toes. The way her first time should have been. The cheeky woman had had other ideas. 103 Nick POV Samantha hugged him tightly after she'd let go of Lucinda. Mary stood waiting patently to be introduced to Lucinda. Who smiled at her, and said hello, though it appeared to Nick that Lucinda seemed a bit nervous, she knew that Mary was important to him, had voiced in the car that she hoped Mary would like her. Nick had reassured her that she would but she was still worried about it. He and Rip wanted to take her up to their suite but the minute the introduction was over she was already fussing about with her women and children from the White Lotus pack, wanting to make sure that they were settled in and shown around. He had offered Brady as a tour guide, seeing the man was more than interested in one of her women. Nick had noted the man offering to assist her, a blonde woman with curly hair and blue eyes. She wasn't much taller than Lucinda and the two of them seemed quite close. He'd seen Lucinda raise an eyebrow at Nick and look at Brady. Nick had just shrugged. Maybe there was something there. Only Brady and the girl herself would know. It was not a full moon guess they would find out at some point. Though the girl, Amy, had glared at Brady and brushed him off completely, it didn't seem to deter his delta from wanting to assist her with her belongings. She'd pulled her suitcase from his hand and told him she was more than capable of carrying it herself and to go help the older women. Then had turned and walked off, latching on to Lucinda with her free hand, and the two of them had walked off into the pack house. Nick watched as Brady's eyes had followed the woman into the pack house, seemed annoyed but didn't say anything, not even when he realized Nick was watching him just turned and actually did start helping the other women unload their things from the bus, then offered his assistance to the movers. Nick's offer for Brady to be the women's tour guide around the pack house and the pack itself had found his mate staring up at him with her hands on her hips, telling him that was not going to happen. She was so darn cute, he'd nearly laughed at her. But had managed to keep it in, just smiled raised his hands and left her to it. He was not going to get what he wanted until she had settled her women, that he was certain of. They were all very loud and noisy, seemed that closing doors was not their thing either. Nick was leaning on the first floor railing where he had full view of them and the foyer downstairs, just watching them with Lucinda. They were all close to each other, they were all talking to one another about being here how big the pack house had been and some of them were already talking about wanting to go into town and look around at the shopping mall. Settling in quickly, it seemed. They appeared happy to be here. Were in and out of each other's rooms without even knocking and none of them seemed to mind one bit. They all nodded to him as they went past him, he nodded and smiled right back at them. He wanted them to feel welcomed by him. He'd picked up a few things about them, what they liked and hoped was here in the pack. The pack house was not going to disappoint them, from what he could tell. And they were all talking about having a barbecue, they were happy to be the cooks. Thought that it would be a good way to meet some of the pack members. He agreed. It did not escape his attention that downstairs in the pack house foyer there were now several unmated wolves all offering assistance or just watching the new women. There were suddenly 48 unmated women in the pack house. The next full moon could be interesting, he thought to himself. Pulled out his phone to see when it was. Might need to prepare for it. 
saw Jeremy stroll into the pack house shirtless and barefoot, his mate Phelan, it did turn out to be, asleep in his arms. When Kevin had finally told him his thoughts on who Jeremy's mate might be, Nick had also suspected it would be Mylan's daughter. He'd smiled a little payback for Jeremy. He wondered how Mylan would take it, but was going to stay out of it. Found her, I see he'd smiled down at his very happy-looking beta. Marked and mated her. Jeremy had smiled right back up at Nick. Isn't she beautiful? Sounded very smitten with his new mate. Nick just nodded down to him. He didn't think anyone was more beautiful than Lucinda was. But Phelan was pretty. Seems all that blue hair was natural. Also seemed Jeremy's love of red-headed women was instantly over. Nick was happy for him. The girl was only 18 though, and still had to finish high school. Only a few months left though. Wondered briefly if Jeremy had thought about that, probably unlikely right this second. Brady was still helping the movers unpack. They were putting the women's things into storage down in the basement of the pack house, the man only stopped assisting when Amy walked by. He always smiled at the woman and asked if she needed anything, to which she stated no and stalked off. Clearly, Brady was interested in her. She, however, didn't appear to be. Though when Nick watched her she treated all his unmated wolves exactly as she treated Brady, not just prejudice against him but all males it seemed. Nick had a few vacant homes around the pack, though he didn't think any of these women would chose them, not from what he was seeing, and not from what he'd seen in Half Moon Pack. They all lived in their own little community, neighbors to each other. Lucinda was the only one not to live amongst them. He'd asked her why? She'd told him she didn't understand the same loss they had had, because she had been wolfless, that she also hadn't liked seeing them sad and hollowed out, she had recovered faster than they had, thought it was because she was wolfless. Though she did spend time with them, she never lived with them. He'd thought it was a bit odd, especially considering how attached to her they all seemed to be and how much she wanted them here and had guilt about leaving them behind when she'd come here the first time. But it had been her choice at the time, did what she felt was right for her, he supposed. He found Mary next to him and looked at her and smiled. What's up? Nothing, just really happy for you, Nicky. Nick growled I'll kill him, which one was it, he muttered. Mary laughed softly the one you can't live without she teased him. Your mate. MMM, asking for A.S. King I believe he could punish her. The fun way, she had taken his S. King quite well, in fact. Mary chuckled so I did have something to tell you. MM she was just looking at him, then after a minute smiled and shook her head, you're going to be an uncle. What, his eyes moved to her stomach. He'd been so preoccupied that he and Rip hadn't even noticed, but now that he was focused on her he could hear the tiny heartbeat, and could see her slightly swollen belly too. How far along? About ten weeks now. Emerson said a good strong heartbeat and growing fast. Nick hugged her alpha pups did usually grow fast and arrive early, five or six months, and boom delivered. Congratulations. You're happy about it, I presume. Yes of course I am, though. Though, he prompted. It's going to stretch out my tats man. Ah, I did tell you not to get one on your abdomen he teased her. She shoved him a little. But, well, you know, it's his. She jerked her thumb at her mate who was walking this way now, favorite tattoo. Enough. I don't need to know or hear that. Nick laughed. So has Lucinda got any? Mary asked him. None. Nick shook his head. But likes mine he smiled, always found her sleeping on it. Rip liked that about their maid too. In Rip's opinion, 
it was Lucinda's way of feeling close to him. She want any? I don't know. Nick shook his head, never thought to ask her. She was twenty-six. If she wanted tattoos she would likely have gone and gotten one already. Will you let me? Nick frowned at her and watched her put her hands up in the air. Enough said she laughed and turned to walk off hand in hand with her mate. Nick had never really thought about it. Lucinda didn't have a single tattoo or piercing, for that matter, not even her ears. His eyes moved to her as she stood talking to a group of three women. He couldn't see any on them either, let his eyes move over them and what skin was showing, nothing he could detect, not a mark to be seen, they might have he supposed under their clothing. Or maybe the white lotus pack had been small and quaint. There was no real human world contact that much he did know, so it might not have been something any of them had seen. He took a call from Lindy, couldn't ignore it, she was now his mother. Officially, now that he and Lucinda were marked and mated. She just wanted to see how things were going with the settling in of her pack members. They were still hers until he initiated them. He would likely do that tomorrow. He had plans for the evening and night. She then asked him when the Luna ceremony was going to be, not this full moon he'd told her, that was less than a week away, not enough time to get all he wanted sorted out, so the next one. She seemed happy with that. Told him she would come a week or so early to help set it up, she'd bring Gabby and the twins with her too. Nick was going to have Samantha and Mary help him organize it, not that the two of them knew it yet, and they could deal with Lindy. Mary, Samantha and he could now find out lots about Lucinda, from her pack members, so hopefully he could have everything tailored to her just like the book said it should be. He would be making it a very formal occasion, and was going to use the pack's ballroom for the first time ever, since he took over. Wandered off to go and look at it, would need to put in new curtains, get all new tables and chairs, definitely could have the floor repolished he thought, started making himself a list of things that needed doing in here. It was all going to have to be done quickly. Nick was in his office when Lucinda came to find him. He smiled up at her, as she walked right over to him and sat herself on the side of his desk. Made him think of the first time she did that. The ladies would like to have a barbecue breakfast tomorrow. I heard, that's fine he nodded. Lucinda raised an eyebrow. Wasn't asking. Just letting you know I already said they could. Is my Luna, asserting herself already, he teased. He liked that she was now comfortable in her role, didn't have to hide who she was anymore and it seemed she wasn't going to either. I thought I did that already, with Jeremy that day. Oh yes, we all felt you, my dear. He watched her chuckle and swore he loved her just that little bit more. You know this coming Monday might be interesting. Why so? she asked. Full moon, and with forty-eight unmated females you just brought into our pack, I guess it could be, she shrugged, and didn't seem bothered either way. You don't think any of them will find their mates here, he questioned, Nick thought they would. Most of them have been mated before. Second chance mates are rare. You got one. Why not them, he frowned at her now. She sighed a little on the heavy side, why not indeed, it's been eight years Nick. I've prayed for them for a long time. Lindy holds mating balls every three months. No luck yet she shrugged again. I haven't held one in five years. So I have a lot of unmated wolves, several hundred in fact. Might have better odds here. Maybe. He could see she was not convinced. Nick was though, by Monday night every unmated male wolf in the pack would be headed for the pack house, he thought, looking for their goddess gifted mate. Might just have to hold a dinner in the ballroom and see what happens, he offered. Watched Lucinda actually frown and shake her head now. I'd rather not. 
would not want to see the disappointment. Most of them do attend Lindy's mating balls, only a few have never. Not one has made it off Nick. You think, they'll not have one then? I think the goddess thought they were all going to die and, she sighed again, didn't bother to grant them a second one. Why when you got one? Would you think that, he asked, a bit confused by her unwillingness to do this. I don't know. I just don't want to get their hopes up. Can we just let this one go? Let them settle in and you can host your dinner for them on the next one. No. Your Luna ceremony will be on the next full moon. She was staring at him now, a little surprised. Nick stood and walked over to her, slid his arms around her, so if you're here, does that mean you've finished settling them all in? Yes she smiled up at him. Want to let Rip and Kyra out, he asked, grinning at her. She laughed, even Nick could feel Kyra growling yes in his mind all right. Nick growled at her, Rip is willing to give her a head start. How much, she teased, pulling herself from his arms and taking a step away from him. Nick shrugged what say 30 seconds from your shift seems fair to us. He'll never catch her she shot back and then ran from his office. Nick laughed, he could feel Rip already itching to shift. He strolled out of his office at a casual pace, listening for her shift. Cheeky woman was still on foot as she ran away from the pack house. He trailed her out the front door and saw her heading for the western woods, stop on the forest line and start pulling her gear off. Watched her shift. Kyra looked right at him, her tail flicking back and forth and then she was gone. Nick pulled his shirt off, and started counting as they tracked her heading south. He started counting. Rip was very excited but did not shift him till 30 seconds had passed, then he ripped right out of him and bolted at top speed after his mate. Scenting her was easy. Nick swore his wolf was running faster than he had ever before. Kyra was indeed fast, but Rip was in full alpha mode, hunting his mate to mate her, cut her off and growled playfully at her, let her turn and run away, only to cut her off again, a game of his own liking it seemed. Not that Kyra seemed to mind at all. Chased her about for quite a while, as the sun hit the horizon he pounced right on and they tumbled over each other. And then Kyra was up rubbing her head on him and letting him smell her. It did not take long for Rip to claim his mate. Mated Kyra furiously and then howled up at the rising moon afterwards, she howled along with him. Then the two of them just lay down on the ground. Rip's large head lying on Kyra's shoulders and they just spent time together. Happy his wolf was, as Nick noted, was Kyra. He could feel both of them right now. They made it some more before heading back to the pack house. Nick herded Rip towards the Omega stairs on the western side of the pack house. He didn't want others seeing Lucinda naked when Kyra shifted them back. Lucinda laughed at him as he held the door open for her. Afraid someone will see you naked, she teased him. No, I just don't want anyone seeing you naked. My eyes only from now on he replied as they headed upstairs to their suite. She laughed that'll happen. I'll punish you good if you do it on purpose he teased her right back. Heard her snort and then ran all the way up the stairs to their door and leaned on it completely naked for all to see. I might like your type of punishment. I know I will he smiled down at her. Opened the door to get her naked body inside. They walked into the living area, he was expecting it to still be a completely destroyed mess, but his eyes widened and nearly popped out of his head at the sight of it. Lucinda nearly keeled over laughing. Clutched at his arm and he could see tears coming out of her already. He knew she was laughing at the look on his face, at his reaction to the room itself. The room was bright yellow with the white leather couch and half a dozen bright orange and yellow cushions, his wooden floor was gone, 
replaced with cream carpet. Even the fireplace mantel, which had been black marble, was now white marble, it was very girly. The two lampshades on either end of the couch had floral prints on them, and there were several pieces of artwork on the wall, all flowers as well. The coffee table was glass and there were several bowls on it filled with decorative balls and dried flowers. What the, he snarled. Lucinda was still laughing oh, who's in trouble? She knew this was not to his taste. He had no idea how she felt about it but he was not happy that was for sure. Mary, I'm betting. Brady would never risk his neck and Mary loves all that frilly flower. Lucinda, it seemed, found it very amusing, not even bothered by his anger that was rising. I heard you can't even punish her, right now she smirked up at him. I'll let Kyra destroy it all. I'm sure she'll enjoy it he muttered, but could already hear Kyra in his head chortling she was letting him know she found it as amusing as Lucinda did, so was unlikely to help him. In charge one week. If she touched my bedroom, I'll beat her senseless the minute that pup is out of her. Nick marched himself off into their bedroom, and thanked the goddess his nut of a sister had had the good sense to leave it as it was. Found himself suddenly shoved down on the bed, and Lucinda was on him pinning him down. How much punishment would I get if I changed your bedroom? Nick laughed, his mood lifted in an instant, her naked body on top of his was all he could think about now. All he'd wanted since getting home. Our bedroom, he corrected himself. He'd heard the inconnotation when she'd said your, after he had said my. But still, I don't know, a.s. king and a half you'd likely get. Hmm. Might like it she leaned down and growled into his ear. You will he teased her right back. Now you got me her in the bed all naked, what are you going to do with me? Nick got to watch her sit up tilt her head up and look at the ceiling, and start tapping those lips of hers as though she was actually pondering the question. Might have to think long and hard about that one. Oh, I got something long and hard for you he grinned up at her and he did, he was ready to give it to her as well. Just move a little lower, my dear. Hmm, I don't know she shook her head a little, still tapping those lips of hers, still teasing him. He growled and grabbed her, yanked her body down onto his and rolled them over so he was on top of her, shifted himself to press his hardened CK against her core, heard her giggle. Now that was what I was thinking she looked right up at him, wound her arms around his neck and pulled him down to kiss him, moving her whole body against his mm it is big and hard she chuckled softly. He growled right back, leaned down, and bit her mark spot softly to hear her moan you ready to scream for me baby, he asked. Yes she was already grinding herself against him. She was so freaking perfect. 104. Lucinda POV the full moon arrived and was due to set at 1849. She had not been convinced by Nick to hold a dinner and invite all the unmated males to the ballroom. But Nick had gone around her and talked to the women. They thought it was a good idea but they didn't want a fancy dinner, and opted for a spit roast outside the back of the pack house and said everyone who wanted to come should come. He'd gotten his way. Lucinda was now prowling around waiting and watching, while his alpha unit were cooking. Nick was observing as Kevin had told him to go away as had the pack's head chef. Neither of them trusted him it seemed, thought he might set fire to the pigs they were roasting. There were wolves all over the place. Nick had told her it was a trial run for their first mating ball, everyone had to dress smart casual today, the whole pack was allowed to attend, mated and unmated as her women had requested. The head chef and his kitchen staff were assisting with the cooking of the ten pigs and ten goats on the spit to go along with the buffets that were loaded with other cooked foods, snacks, and desserts. Lucinda looked at her watch, near every minute waiting for the moon to set. Her women were all busy helping to cook, 
didn't want to be a burden, wanted to be valuable members of their new pack, they'd all been initiated in the day after they had arrived. Seemed happy to do so, that made her happy. She had hugged Nick after the last one had been initiated in and he'd taken that as an opportunity to have his way with her in his office. On his desk. The women were all helping to cook. They did love community time, very close-knit, and none of them seemed at all bothered about all the unmated males sitting around waiting on the moon themselves. Nick had laid down some very strict rules for them and they were all adhering to them. The pack, it seemed not only listened to him but respected his choices. Nick had already told her when they did hold mating balls they would be nothing like what had happened back in Half Moon Pack, he would not be allowing wolves his OR visiting packs to go around mating anything, anywhere that they pleased, before the moon set. He absolutely hated that and would just not be allowing it here, and she actually agreed with him on that one. It seemed they had found something in common finally. He'd been very happy about her wanting the same thing. She found a pair of arms around her with one minute to go. Stop pacing, it will be fine. Nick told her, his voice was soft and reassuring. What if nothing happens, she chewed her lower lip worriedly. There are almost a hundred unmated males here. I'm certain some of them will find their mates. Nick stood there with her, holding her body back against his. Just relax he dropped his chin onto the top of her head. Just breathe he said, trying to calm her nerves. The moon set and it was absolutely crazy. The word mate she must have heard two dozen times, heard Nick chuckle and felt him hug her again and I told you so. Lucinda got to see half her women pair up near instantly, though not all her women were down here, about ten of them had opted out of the dinner due to it being a full moon. She wondered if she should insist on them coming downstairs. Not all were loved up instantly either. Lucinda saw three of the more mature women put their hands up to stop their new mate and start to back away. She bit her lip and wondered what was going to happen. Looking at them she realized they were all women who had teens at home, didn't look like they were actively rejecting their new mate, just more like they wanted to take it slow, would need to discuss the children with them first, she guessed. Leaned back into Nick and actually relaxed a little. At least it went well. To her surprise, she saw Dr. Emerson standing before one of the women, the oldest ones in fact, had a 17-year-old daughter here with her. She thought he was already mated, looked up at Nick and pointed it out to him questioningly. Two mates I guess he shrugged at her. Why is he here? she asked him. Enjoying a meal with his mate. Nick pointed out a woman sitting drinking a glass of wine, watching her mate with another. She didn't even seem phased by it, was smiling actually. Lucinda and Nick watched as Dr. Emerson walked his new mate over and introduced her to his first mate. She looked from one to the other and Lucinda watched wide-eyed as his first mate stood up, put her glass down and then kissed out of her saw Dr. Emerson slide his arms around the two kissing women and smile hugging them both. Well now, ain't that something? Nick's voice purred in her ear. Don't even think about it, KYRA will rip parts off you she warned him. Heard Nick chuckle I only have eyes for you my dear. You'd better, she teased, but knew he did. The man had barely left her alone at all. He'd told her when showing her her office we'd better christen it then he'd told her they had better christen his office too practically anywhere that had soundproofing needed christening in his mind. She'd not had a single shower on her own since they'd gotten back either. Even when she tried to, KYRA told him what she was doing and he would appear naked before her, all growly and horny you showering without me woman, the man it seemed had more than one fetish and the shower seemed to be on top of his list, right after mirrors. Thank the goddess, she was too high on pleasure to even care about his fetish for watching everything he did to her. Made him dd near insatiable and she thought she was going to explode from the inside out. K 
KYRI and Rip were just as bad, made it in wolf form or human form every day and Nick was always touching her. He had missed training every day since they'd gotten back, so he could have his way with her. The man was horny all the time, his wolf it seemed just as bad. Nick had commented about how much fun he was going to have with her when she went into heat, had grinned right at her and rubbed his hands together all excited at the prospect, it seemed, and her eyes had widened, goddess she hadn't even thought about that. She'd had to go off and find Samantha ask some very embarrassing questions. She'd actually never gone into heat. Being wolfless in all most of her life. Samantha had answered all of her questions without issue, not embarrassed at all, told her not to worry about it, her body would know what to do. That heat would come when it was time, that the first time would likely be a little painful for her, no wonder Nick was itching for it to happen. Told her that not only would she know, Nick would also know if he was close by, be able to smell it, he'd had a particular scent to it. Told her it wouldn't take long to happen a week or so from being marked and mated was the normal. So staying close to Nick was likely a good idea till it happened as any unmated males would also smell her heat and it was a dangerous time to be out roaming so not to. That had more than bothered her. Lucinda had stayed close to Nick, she didn't want to be fighting off unmated males, when she had a mate. Had asked how often it would happen. Apparently that varied with each wolf, but mostly once or twice a year. Asked what would happen if she went into heat and Nick wasn't here in the pack? Away for some alpha meeting or giving assistance to another pack. She would be locked in their suite with some good drugs from the pack doctor to help ease it. But was assured Samantha would contact Nick right away and that he would come right home to mate her. Part of Lucinda was terrified for it to happen and another part of her was excited for it to happen. But had changed the subject every time that Nick had brought it up. Not yet ready to discuss that. Hadn't even told him she'd never been in heat before. He probably already knew, she thought he did know about her past and that she'd only ever been with one other before him. Heard her name called from the pack house and turned. Amy, one of her childhood friends actually was leaning on the balcony from her room looking down at her. Yes Ames she called back. Can we get some food up here? Come down and get it. Lucinda told her. Was glared at by Amy. Like Lucinda, she too had opted out of every mating ball, was 26 and never mate, not even had a boyfriend as far as Lucinda knew. Didn't want one after seeing how bad it was to lose one, she had decided to keep to herself. What Amy was not seeing as she was focused on Lucinda, was that Brady was climbing up the outside of the pack house, heard Nick stifle a laugh, she knew as well as he did that Brady had been eyeing off Amy the whole time she'd been here. Could barely take his eyes off the woman in fact. Sweet goddess the man was athletic pulled himself up to the first floor via a downpipe onto a first floor balcony, had climbed up onto the balcony, he was about four rooms away from where Amy was standing. He stepped onto the railing of that balcony and leaped across the gap to the next one, making it look very easy. She watched as he went from one balcony to another until he landed right next to her on her balcony. Saw Amy's head whip around to stare at the man, Mind she heard him growl very loudly from where he was, knew everyone around them would have heard him claim her, bit her lip and prayed Amy wouldn't reject the man. He had been through enough, she'd by now heard the entire saga that had gone on here, including that of a she-wolf, Valerie, had been Brady's mate and had rejected him on sight. She didn't want that to happen again. Watched as Amy back up a step away from him, turned and looked right at her, kind of a bit panicked, Lucinda gave her a thumbs up to try and tell her it was okay, watched as Brady pulled the woman quite roughly into his arms and stood there. His face in her neck, he had her face pressed into his appeared to be just breathing her in and making her breathe him in. Saw Amy a few startled minutes later lean into him and relax. 
Thank the goddess she heard Nick murmur and turned around and hugged him, felt the same, relief that she hadn't rejected him. I went to school with her, never let a wolf touch her, after, she trailed off. She'll be fine with Brady, he reassured her. I know. He might want to take it slow though, she commented. It doesn't look like he's rushing to me, my dear. To be honest, I think Brady will be cautious himself. She heard Jeremy and Kevin yell up at him about time man. Turned to see Brady just smile down at them. He was not coming back down to continue cooking it seemed, likely he would stay up there all night with his newly found mate. She was still wrapped in his arms, her face buried in his neck, though he no longer held her there. Was freely standing there with him. 105. Nick POV Nick just relax, everything is under control. Jeremy told him as he watched Nick pace back and forth. It's just, I hate waiting, when will it be ready? Nick had been called and informed it was ready but it wasn't. He was prowling back and forth inside the workshop. Only he and Jeremy and Beans knew about this surprise, one he'd kept quiet on purpose. Ever since Lucinda had shown him the white lotus pack symbol she'd had hidden in her compound bow case, he'd wanted to do something special with it. Getting it out from under her nose had not been easy, the woman had eyes like a hawk any time anyone went near that bow case, and although she had showed it to him, and he'd told her she could display it if she wanted to, she put it right back under the lining and said she liked having it there. Getting it out without her knowing had not been easy. He only had to walk within a meter of the case and her eyes were on him. The one time he'd tried to pick it up she'd growled at him, had cleared her throat and apologized, said it was force of habit, but he got the distinct impression he shouldn't touch it, and she used it every day to now, off training several of their teens every afternoon so not only had he had to steal it out from underneath her he'd had to get it back before she knew it was missing. He had thought long and hard about this gift in fact, brought up the idea with Jeremy, to see how he felt about it, Jeremy had thought about it for only a few minutes and then told him, he'd actually thought it was a really good idea. Then the two of them had set out completing paperwork, petitioning the Wolf and Council and getting their approval for the changes he wanted to make. No one but he, Jeremy and Beans knew what was going to happen tonight during the Luna's ceremony. Beans is just polishing it up, calm down Nick, it's all good. Calm down, yeah that was going to happen, the ceremony was tonight and the thing wasn't ready yet. Beans had been informed as late as possible so to keep the secret, so it was kind of a rush job, but Nick knew Beans would be doing his best work. Nick didn't want anyone spilling this secret and having her find out. On the bright side, he wasn't likely to get caught in the act. Lucinda was very busy with Lindy, Gabby, Samantha, Mary and the twins. A spa day today. She had been kept busy all week, and Lindy had kept her clear of the ballroom at his request, another surprise for her, what the room would look like though all the women from White Lotus were in on that. Actually, one of the older women, Zoe had come to his office and asked to have a word with him on behalf of all of them, the day he'd announced when her Luna ceremony would be. She had sat down and told him, how a Luna ceremony would have been done within the White Lotus, had requested permission for her and some of the women to attend to a few things that were traditional within the White Lotus, to try and make her ceremony even more special for her, bring a bit of her old pack to her new pack. Nick had liked the idea, he knew how much she loved her home, and had granted Zoe permission to do just that, he had granted them permission to leave the pack as long as they took several warriors with them for protection, just in case and that they were not to tell Lucinda. She had nodded and agreed. Those women had left the pack this morning at 4 a.m. in a convoy of five cars and had returned just after 2 p.m. and headed right for the ballroom to set what they wanted up. Nick knew everything in the ballroom was just about ready to go. 
he'd checked it already. Finally, Beans walked out and placed the item he was waiting on before Nick. It was a work of art. Beans had outdone himself, it seemed, showed him and Jeremy how it worked. They were both very impressed, it was only slightly different to what Nick had wanted, but even now he realized this was better, it was polished to a high shine too, so beautiful. Nick wondered if the man had missed his calling. When he'd explained it to Beans the man had nodded and stated simply leave it to me and now Nick was glad that he had. It was boxed up and loaded into Nick's Hummer and he and Jeremy took it to the ballroom, set it up and covered it. What do you think? Nick asked Jeremy. I honestly think, she'll love it. Do you think the pack will be alright with it? It's your pack Nick. They will accept it, new beginnings is good. Nick felt Jeremy's hand clap him on the back. Now, how do I go about telling Mylan and Faye they're going to be grandparents, without my head coming off? Nick turned and stared at him a little more than shocked, geez didn't take you long, hey. You can blame that on your mate. Jeremy laughed at him. They both laughed. Kevin's mate Phoebe was also pregnant, as were pretty much all those that had gone into heat just after Lucinda had gotten out of the hospital after KYRA had taken on that bear. In all seriousness, help me out man, she hasn't even finished school yet. Mylan's going to kill me. When did you find out? Nick smiled. This morning, I woke up to a very smiley Phelan, jumping all over our bed, nearly fell off it three times in her excitement. Salty can feel it already. Well, congratulations. Nick clapped him on the back. Thanks. So, Phelan will tell Mylan and Faye, that girl doesn't shut up. Hey, that's my mate you're talking about. Nick chuckled, yes she is she couldn't keep a secret for the love of it. Had ruined two of Jeremy's practical jokes already this month, Jeremy had learned you can't tell her anything, she just tells everyone. Phelan was very loud and very excitable, it seemed. Would cut Jeremy off mid-sentence any time she felt like it. Often ran from the pack house, only to be found hanging out with her friends. Jeremy had given up trying to contain the girl. Now just shrugged it off letting her be who she was, it seemed. Not much choice in the matter really. Not when the girl, it was now known, did have the same powers as her father. When she had knocked over that glass of water on the table at breakfast two weeks ago. Had snapped her hand out to save it and found all the water in her hand just swirling around in a ball. Had squealed so loudly Rip had snarled his irritation out of him not that Phelan had even noticed her alpha snarling at her. Too excited at what had happened, her eyes had started glowing and she got up and ran screaming excitedly out of the room, yelling for her daddy not that he would hear her from here. Jeremy had leaned back in his chair and watched her go, shook his head, smiled and said nothing at all, used to the girl's screaming he'd figured. Time to get ready Nick. Jeremy told him. Interrupting his thoughts. Nick nodded. He hadn't seen Lucinda since breakfast, knew she and all the women had been having a spa day in town. Lindy and Gabby had promised him she would be wearing a dress. He'd worried she'd not be, didn't seem to wear them ever. All of the Alpha Unit's mates, plus Samantha and Mary were with her too, even the twins were getting a taste of being fully spoiled today, it seemed. Lucinda was always smiling now, they'd not had a single fight in a month. Nick almost couldn't believe it. He did love it when she smiled at him, though it did make it very hard for him to keep his hands to himself. The only annoying thing was that she'd not yet gone into heat. It was very unusual. Most newly mated she-wolves went into heat within a week or two at the most, even Phelan and Amy had been in heat already. He was a little concerned about it. Lucinda seemed a bit on the embarrassed side when he brought it up, 
had finally told him she'd never gone into heat, thought it was because she had been wolfless. It would happen when it happened, Samantha and Mary had told him. Just let it be. Most she-wolves got their wolves at sixteen and then wouldn't find their mate till eighteen or older, so they had their wolves a good two or three years before their first heat. Told him it could just be a while. Nick walked into the ballroom and surveyed the room after getting ready, used his office so he didn't see Lucinda, wasn't allowed to apparently, not that he hadn't seen her naked that morning before they took her away. A smile touched his face he shook his head to clear it. That woman was always popping into his thoughts. Nick had replaced his favorite suit finally and was wearing it, though today he had replaced the usual tie, with one that matched the theme of the Luna ceremony, was now white and blue. All the white curtains were tied back with blue cords and all of the windows were open to allow the spring breeze in. The glass ceiling had been cleaned inside and out so the moon goddess herself would be able to see all that went on here tonight, just like Bella had told him. There were tables all set with white tablecloths, twenty to a table, and the chairs all had pastel-colored covers and a sheer green ribbon wrapped around them. He could see his pack members starting to file in through the doors at the other end. Not all of them would fit in this room but there were tables set up outside as well. Plenty of standing room though, for everyone to watch. The ceremony itself only brief, but the party afterwards would go all night long. He could see the four violinists and two cellists tuning up at the other end, ready to go. He had requested that everyone, even the children, come in formal wear, and it seemed from what he was seeing they had all done so. Nick turned his attention back to the tables. There were candles on all the tables, and a very large glass bowls on several of them right in the center of the round tables. There in each bowl was a large lotus flower. All the tables she would pass on her entrance into the ballroom had lotus flowers in a bowl. As well as all the main tables that would seat his unit and their mates. Alpha Cory and Luna Lindy, plus his Alpha unit and their mates, and her entire retrieval team and all their mates who had come as well, the twins it seemed would be sitting with them at their table. Gabby requested it, seeing as they were sisters. His table, with her held five lotus flowers in five bowls and then had a lotus flower candle in the center of all those bowls, his people had done an excellent job. The place looked beautiful. He smiled and greeted his pack members as he headed for the raised platform where he and his alpha unit, his and her family would all be sitting. Most were already here waiting, he noted, Lindy, Gabby and the twins still with her, it seemed. Alpha Cory, his unit and the retrieval team had all arrived yesterday. He watched as Alpha Cory stood and greeted him well done son. Thank you, can't take all the credit though. Ah of course you can. For a man who knew very little about Lunas two months ago. You have come a long way, and he indicated the room, done a wonderful job on this ceremony. Best tell Lindy she did a good job. All her doing. Nick smiled at him. Oh, and she will never let you forget it. Already planning on coming back in about four months or so, after our little girl is born. Thanks for the warning. Nick laughed, ah, she'll be too happy to annoy you, I assure you, babies are her thing. Samantha mind linked him to tell him that they were ready as she walked into the ballroom, dressed in a long deep green dress, looked very nice. He smiled right at her, waited for her to join Frank on the stage. Nick stepped forward and quieted the room and nodded to the musicians and they started to play. The doors from the pack house to the ballroom opened and the twins walked in together, wearing knee-length dresses that were white on the top, blended down to yellow and ended up pink on the bottom, they were holding each other's hands, very cute they were with their blonde hair all curled and loose around their smiling faces. Gabby and Lindy stood on either side of the doors holding them open for her both in floor-length dresses of light blue that blended to dark blue, and then there she was 
his beautiful Luna wearing a long floor-length midnight blue halter neck dress, with a gazillion glittering crystals covering the bodice, her long black hair curled and loosely twisted around to the right side to flow down her body. The mark he'd given her on full display for everyone to see. It was white like the moon. His research on why their marks were white, he'd found it was her lineage that made their marks white, so all around them could see she was the moon goddess's descendant. She looked like a doll, her lips were dark red and she was wearing blue eyeliner and mascara, her naturally long lashes, even longer now. Lucinda was wearing the jewellery he had bought for her for tonight's occasion, not that he had ever seen her wear any before so he had let her choose it herself, a white gold bangle and matching bangle-type necklace, very simple. Had outright refused the diamonds he'd picked out, looked right at him, told him it was a waste of the pack's money, as she would only be wearing them on special occasions. Had not even agreed when he'd tried to argue with her about it, about wanting to gift her this. She had told him to put that ridiculous amount of money into new training gear for her teens, and rolled her aura right at him, making a point. He'd laughed in the end and done just that. Allowed her the simple things she wanted. Nick watched as her eyes moved around the room, as she walked in, made no noise at all as she walked. His eyes moved to her feet, and he almost laughed. She was completely barefooted. Shook his head slightly, he'd heard Lindy telling her she needed to wear high heels and the argument that had followed it, Lucinda had muttered, she'd well go barefooted just to annoy the woman, as she'd climbed into their bed one night. Watched as her eyes landed on the center pieces on the tables, one hand covered her mouth, while the other reached out to touch the flower closest to her, slid her fingers along its petals and saw tears well in her eyes as they turned to him happy tears he hoped, then she walked across the room towards him, up the stairs, he turned and watched her as tears fell down onto her cheeks, she walked right over to him and hugged him, right there in front of everyone. It's perfect she told him your old Pax idea, thank them he hugged her back. Where did you get all those flowers from? Nick tilted her chin up to make her look at him looked right down at her and smiled from the white lotus pack, of course. Freshly picked this morning by Zoe and some others. Really, she sounded quite shocked. Yes he leaned down and kissed her softly on the mouth shall we get underway. Lucinda nodded up at him and brushed her tears away. I love it she whispered as he turned her to face the gathered crowd. Some were sitting but most were standing. The room had gone quiet, they were waiting on him. He cleared his throat, looked down at her and smiled, then turned to his pack I Alpha Nicholas Frost, hereby formally announce to you all, my goddess gifted mate, my Luna. Now you're Luna. I hereby present to you all Luna Lucinda Frost he had already asked her about putting Frost to her name, though he thought she would have reservations, she'd had none had smiled at him and said she would take his name. Nick watched as she bowed her head slightly to the pack, I, Lucinda Frost, am happy to be your Luna. I will protect you in times of need. Give guidance when it is requested. I will help to train you to defend yourselves. Do my best to be a good Luna to the pack. I accept Alpha Nicholas Frost as my goddess gifted mate and pledge my loyalty to him and his pack. There was a massive roar from the crowd and lots of clapping. Nick turned her around to face him, tilted her chin up and leaned down to kiss her deeply, growled softly as she slid her arms around his neck and kissed him back for all to see, pressing her whole body against his. Nick pulled himself back from her and smiled. The woman he was certain was trying to turn him on in front of everyone, the cheeky smile on her face said it all, he was right, shook his head at her and chuckled at her sudden innocent look of what, as if she had done nothing. He hushed the crowd once more, pulling her into his side. She was trying not to laugh. He could feel it. I have a gift to present to our Luna, he told everyone. 
watched as she looked up at him questioningly. He cleared his throat once more, here goes, he thought as you are all aware. This pack, the Blue Moon Rising pack, has a terrible history. Which can never be forgotten. I think, though, we all need a new beginning he turned and looked at Jeremy, who got up and walked over to the gift he hoped and prayed Lucinda would love. His pack would accept. My Luna here, was a Luna to another pack before coming here, now lost to us all forever, she and her remaining pack members have all been accepted here. So for a new beginning for them and for all of us. I have petitioned the Wolfen Council and it has been approved for a change to our pack's name. We will now be known as the Rising Blue Lotus Pack. This is for our two packs coming together, united now as one. Nick looked at Jeremy again, who removed the cloth from the new pack symbol. A blue moon with the white lotus pack symbol overlaid on top. A representation of the two packs joined as one. Jeremy showed everyone how the two pieces slid apart and then back together our pack's gate symbol will forever show our two packs coming together as one. There were many gasps throughout the crowd, his eyes moved to Lucinda. She was standing next to him, but turned to look at the new symbol for their new pack. He touched her face gently and she looked up at him. More tears welling in her eyes again. What do you think? he asked her softly. It's beautiful Nick, thank you, wound her arms around him and leaned into him. The crowd was clapping again, approved by them too, he thought. Well done boy. I see hope for you yet Bella mind linked him, a frost I like. Thank you Bella it was nice to hear she liked him. Oh, you're about to be a great grandmother. I hear Jeremy is going to be a father. He couldn't resist spilling that secret to her. Nick heard Jeremy's name being yelled from the side of the room, where she was standing, and laughed softly now who's getting a beating with that cane watched as Jeremy's head snapped around. What did you do? and then he was gone to hide behind Phelan from his own granny, who was waving a cane at him, yelling at him about not being the first one to know he was going to be a father. Nick he looked down at Lucinda, still fully amused about granny and Jeremy. Yes, my dear. I have a gift for you too she smiled up at him you're going to be a father too. W.H. What? His eyes were wide now as he stared at her slid his eyes down her body, and tilted his head to listen, and surely there it was, the tiny fluttering of a heartbeat in her womb. How had he missed that? Heard Rip snort I hid it from you, she tell you when she was ready. Nick didn't even care that his wolf had hidden this from him deliberately. His hand reached and touched her still flat stomach and then his eyes moved to hers. He didn't know what to say at all utterly speechless. Joy filled him, pulled her into his arms and picked her clean up off the floor you're amazing he told her and kissed her. She laughed softly you put it there she teased him through the mind link, can't keep your hands to yourself. Nick burst out laughing, never, he told her and meant it. That accounts for why she never went into heat. Already pregnant. The whole Alpha unit bar Brady's mate was pregnant but Nick knew that wouldn't take long, not with the Luna he had in her wolf's gifts. Everything was perfect. The goddess Shirley had truly blessed him and their pack. Epilogue One year later Nick POV standing with his daughter Selena in his arms, Nick was standing watching Lucinda. She was kneeling down in the water of the lotus pond he'd, had created for her and the women. They were all there talking to each other, picking lotus flowers for gifts to be given to the nine new pups born in the pack this morning. Nick had walked out there with her, taken little Selena, now seven months old, from her so she could go and be with them, had seen them do this a lot, planting lotus flowers, picking lotus flowers, just coming out here to wait in the water and talk amongst themselves. It was such a natural thing for them all to do. Lucinda was kneeling in the water uncaring that it was going to ruin the long dress she was wearing. 
she had one hand out touching a flower, her fingers tracing the petals gently, closed her eyes. He knew she was thinking about her family, this is where she came to feel close to those she lost. It's where they all came to think about their lost families. This pond he'd discussed with Mylan and, to Nick's surprise, the man who'd been more than willing to help, had brought in two dozen very talented water nymphs to help with the creating of it. He'd seen them all bow to the man as they'd walked past him, seen Mylan look right at him. Nick just smiled, he didn't say anything, was curious as to the man's lineage though left it alone. Heard Mylan tell Jeremy on more than one occasion to take care of his little princess. Wondered if Phelan was exactly that, a water nymph princess. If so, did Jeremy know? Mylan had been in this pack for twenty years, whatever his true rank was in the water nymph society. He'd likely had to give it up to be here in the pack. Or Nick presumed so, but the way those other nymphs bowed to him, maybe not. Him well, as long as the man was happy to be here, Nick would have him here. If he had to take in a bunch of water nymphs at some point, so be it. The lotus pond was not large, only about the size of the Olympic swimming pool he had in the gym, but the women seemed to love it regardless. It sat just east of the pack house and was fed by one of the rivers with Mylan's help. He was teaching Phelan how to keep it healthy or trying to, but even with twin boys she was still a handful, and as Mylan put it too young yet, to want to learn. They both knew the girl wanted something else, didn't want to be responsible for keeping waterways clean and healthy. Had a mind of her own. Though she attended the lessons, she was not fully focused on them. Their pack had flourished with many new pack members due to having to hold mating balls. He'd also lost quite a few to other packs as well. His mating balls were all held formally, everyone was dressed to impress in gowns and suits. He'd also gained and lost some through attending mating balls, some he still did not enjoy, others weren't so bad. The pack had also been blessed with nearly 150 pups in the past year, which made him smile. There were at least 100 wolves pregnant now as well, their pack was growing quickly because of his Luna. Lucinda stayed here within the pack. He would not have anyone thinking she was available to touch. He and Rip were still very possessive over her. She didn't mind at all and didn't like going to them anyway. He only attended due to the stupid clauses to his mating alliance Lindy had put in. Selena squirmed in his arms, wanting to get down. He smiled down at her and her big blue eyes, looked like her mother, but had his eyes. Mummy she said to him. Her first word, he'd been a little jealous, to be honest, had spent weeks trying to coach her into saying daddy. Lucinda had laughed right in his face and said I win. Nick tickled her a little and put her down on the ground, My dear, your daughter wants you he mind linked Lucinda. Watched as she opened her eyes, plucked the flower and turned to look right at him, smiled and then looked right at their daughter, crawling towards her in the pond, named after the moon goddess herself. She stood up, her long white dress clinging to her slightly swollen stomach. Soon they would be having their second pup a boy he'd been told already. She looked so beautiful out there amongst all the flowers in her lotus pond. Looked happy. She walked over and picked up Selena, letting her touch the flower she was carrying as she walked right over to Nick can't hold her for even ten minutes. She shook her head. Ah she just loves you more he smiled, it wasn't the reason, he just wanted to touch her and Nick knew she would pick their daughter up and walk over to him. He did it all the time, it was the easiest way to get her in his arms without her thinking he wanted to have his way with her. Which he always still did, nothing had changed. Still found her the most beautiful creature he'd ever laid eyes upon. Never tired of looking at her, never tired of watching her sleep, never got tired of touching her. Denny was right about that. 
Nick slid an arm around her and then his other hand was on her belly. He growled softly we should let mother watch her his tone was playful. Lucinda whacked him and chuckled how do you think, I got into this state. Nick shook his head. Hmm, I don't know. You should educate me in that department, I think. She was laughing now, he loved it, they could still tease each other and have fun. Oh, I think you know plenty. He could see Kyra right there in her eyes, a little excitement filtered from her wolf at the thought of them mating. She couldn't shift at the moment to be with Rib, but was more than happy to push forward and mate in human form. Nick, Amy's in labor. Brady's voice came down the mind link. All right, see you soon. Nick replied. The last of his alpha unit to have a pup. Their children would all grow up together. The heir to his pack, little Selena, her betas Geraldine and Aram, her gamma Jonas and now her delta was about to be born, whether it be a boy or a girl was yet to be known. Amy had wanted it to be a surprise. Nick touched Selena's little button nose. Your delta is about to be born, let's go and say hello. He plucked Selena from Lucinda's arms and watched her pull her dress up and knot it on one side, slip her hand into his and they walked off towards the pack hospital, she was twirling the lotus flower in her hand, smiling to herself the whole way. I knew I picked this one for a reason she said as they walked into the hospital. Jeremy and the twins were sitting in the waiting room. Kevin and a heavily pregnant Phoebe, do any day now herself with their second child, along with little Jonas as well. Phelan was the only one not here, but Nick suspected the girl was in the delivery suite, was going to make a great doctor it seemed, loved delivering babies or helping at this point. Was already under Dr. Emerson's tutelage. She listened to him much more than her own father. It didn't take long for them to hear the crying of a baby. It's a boy. Phelan burst out of the room and threw herself at Jeremy and hugged him, sighed happily about loving babies. Nick watched Jeremy just smile at her, still young and full of energy. It was nearly an hour before Brady came out with his son all wrapped up in a blanket. He knelt down for all the little ones to see him Corey, after the alpha who took her in he announced the little boy's name. Lucinda sighed softly and Nick felt her lean into him, liked it apparently. Their son would be Samuel, named after Samantha, not that their mother knew that yet, she was pressing for them to call him Nicholas just like his father, the man who'd saved the pack is how she put it as he looked down on the next generation to lead his pack. Nick couldn't have been happier, Selena was touching the boy's little head gently, bonding already with him. His daughter would have the strongest alpha unit around. Two betas likely with their mother's abilities, at least Nick was hoping so. A gamma with Kevin's ability and apparently it was very strong, James didn't really affect Lucinda that much. She'd told him, Kevin, on the other hand, she wanted to punch every time he rolled his aura at her, and he did like to torment her, could gain her undivided attention in less than a minute. He'd discussed it with James. Apparently, not even James could do that with Lindy. And their little Delta, if he was anything like his father, one brave and fearless man he would be. No one would ever get near her to hurt her not that Nick was ever going to let her out of his sight, and boys. No they were all going to be kept away and any mate alpha or not would be made to come here. She was not leaving this pack, none of his children would ever go to another pack. He would be putting his alpha foot down on that one. Though Lucinda had laughed when he'd told her that. Oh you think so hey, and what if he's just like you? Not going to happen period he'd told her. Though deep down he wanted her to have a mate just like him, strong and relentless, willing to kill for her. But that boy would be coming here where Nick could keep his eye on him and that was that. The End